Hey everybody, welcome back to part two of the Northern Snakehead Truth series. Now, before I go any further, if you haven't seen part one of this series, definitely go back and check out part one. In part one, I discuss who John Odenkirk is, why you should consider him an authoritative voice on the subject of Northern Snakehead, and we discuss what the term invasive actually means and whether or not there is evidence to support Northern Snakehead as being labeled invasive. Because while government agencies have labeled them as invasive, there's no evidence yet to demonstrate ecological, biological, or economic harm, which, is, which are three criteria generally associated with labeling something as invasive. So yeah, if you haven't seen part one, go back, check that out. We'll cover some other information as well. In today's episode, we're going to get into the findings from the first International Snakehead Symposium that was held in Virginia in 2018. And it hosted experts from around the country and a few international experts from around the world. They came together, shared notes, and I've left links to all and everything they discussed in the description of this video as well. But, but we're going to cover the different species within the U.S., we're going to cover growth rates, a lot of other interesting stuff. So let's get straight to the episode. Right. Now on that note, this past year, I, I touched on this before, but let's actually dig a little bit deeper, okay. was the Snakehead Symposium. Right. Okay. Run us through that. What was it? What was discussed? What was found? We had a really good meeting last summer in July. <clears throat> I dubbed it the first International Snakehead Symposium. And we had people come from all over the country. I think we had 22 states represented. I wanted to be there. I, I wanted to be there so bad. <laughs> <laughs> we had four countries represented. We had, public, we had presentations from Japan and China and Hawaii. Not that that's a different country, but they've had snakeheads there for a long time. And um, what happened was, <clears throat> in addition to the Mid-Atlantic, kind of epicenter of northern snakehead distribution and uh, expansion. We've also got this little pod in, 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 in central U.S. breaking out of Arkansas. Oh, and really? they're, they're close to getting into the Mississippi. And once that happens... That's, that's all over. Right. They're, all they're, over. The door's wide open. Yep. And they've already gone into the state of Mississippi. And, and so there's a, there are a lot of states <clears throat> and regional groups down there that are concerned. And, and they, they'd only pretty much heard the hype. Okay? They haven't been too plugged in to you know that what's going on along the east coast and, and and heard melissa cohen's paper heard you know papers that we've done about really populations that we've had for a couple decades now and, and it's sort of like okay so um what you know th they're more still on the hysterical end where you hear from the newspapers yep. that you know they're gonna frank and fish yeah all that yep. and, and so they went to an individual that was known for um doing a lot of good work with the uh, asian carp outbreak and, and his name was Dwayne Chapman. And they went to Dwayne, he, he's out of Missouri, and, and they said, we need to loan, snakeheads are coming to us. We recognize that. Not necessarily from the Mid-Atlantic, but from, from Arkansas. And we need to know what's the latest information. What's the best way to, you know, to deal with it if we have to deal with this? And they, so they said, Dwayne, we need a symposium. We need to figure all this out. And, and so Dwayne called me up. And he just said, hey, uh, would you be interested in help me put on this meeting? I said, yeah, sure, we could do that. Talk snakehead anytime. Talk snakehead. <laughs> and, and so uh, we ended up hosting it, uh, the Virginia chapter, American Fishery Society. And the entire meeting is on our website now. So if you just, if you just oh, uh, no. do a search for the Virginia chapter at American Fishery Society, the, every part, presentation and the panel discussion that we had over two days, everything is up there on our site. So you can go back and look at any talk. I'll include the link in the video. Um, there you go. But the good news was, you know, I guess a lot of people came to that meeting. We exchanged a ton of good information. And most people left, I think. I, I got positive feedback from a lot of attendees that, that they left. They were a lot, they felt better armed, I think, maybe to deal with the situation and less apprehensive based on what we heard from Japan and Hawaii and places where the snake has been for a century or more. Uh, that maybe the evil was not going to rain down and destroy all that was near and dear. <laughs> good deal, good deal. For those real snakehead enthusiasts out there, what other species of snakehead are within the U.S.? Okay, so we've probably got four. Initially, we thought it was three, but there's there was there's some mis-ID in in Hawaii. Oh, certainly in in Florida, we have the bullseye. Oh yeah. Uh, one one, one day I'm one day I'm getting down there to catch him. We had an excellent public a, a presentation from a guy named Kelly Gestring. He's a biologist with Florida who did a, a great job with that. And there were some other presentations about the bullseye in terms of its expansion, and it is expanding, but not at the rate that we've seen the northern expand, both in, in the two populations that we have. Um, and then Hawaii, for a long time, we, we've had the blot snakehead that was misidentified, uh, I believe, as a striped snakehead. Two, but now they do think that both are 
alive in Hawaii, primarily on Oahu, although there may be a population on, on Kauai as well. But the bottom line there is they can't even find any to do any evaluations. They're so rare. Uh, I asked the, the biologist Annette uh, Tagawa, uh, I, the first time I ever talked to her on the phone was back in 04 when everything was blowing up. And, and I, was, I, I just needed information. So I was, I was you know, I was calling everybody I could trying to find out, and somebody told me, well, they've snakeheads in Hawaii, they've been there for a century. And I said, well, well, I gotta talk to the biologist out there. <laughs> and so I ended up with Annette, who was lovely, and came to our meeting last summer after I'd been doing pen pals with her for 15 years. It was really cool to meet her. But she says, uh, I never forget this, you know, 2004, I said, what problems do snakeheads have in, in, in Hawaii? Pay attention, this, this is good right here. <laughs> <laughs> she said, there's not enough. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> That's what she said, and yep. she said it again in July. <clears throat> There's not enough. Our fishermen like them. They want to catch them. They want to eat them, and they can't find them. Yep. So um, it's not the northern. It's a different. It's a different species, but it's a very. It's a cana. It's the same genus. They're very closely related. They just can't tolerate our our winters. They wouldn't be happy here today, like the northern probably is. Now, on that note, again, just because I, I love nature, I especially love snakehead. Rank them in size for me. Just out of, just out of curiosity out there. I, I, there might be differences in length you mean the, versus the different weight. Species? Different species in the U.S., yes. Oh, um, I, that's a good question. I've seen pig, I don't honestly know from a taxonomic standpoint. Uh, I've heard that the, the, the bullseyes can get larger than the northerns, but I've never seen one get that big. And the pictures I've seen are generally fairly small. Uh, so I don't know that they're just getting... Um, you know, harvested before they reach a trophy size, if you want to call it that. You know, I, the giant, which we don't have any in the U.S. other than a few aquarium releases that were caught and weren't naturally self-sustaining, uh, obviously based on the name, uh, you would assume that, that, that they get a bit larger than the northerns. But the northerns, um, we've already seen them get slightly larger here than, than what we thought would be the upper end based on native ranges, which is not unusual, though, because, the, you know, a novel species in a new environment yep. with a very productive system, and they're not edging it out by a lot, maybe 10% or so, but, you know, we're seeing fish, 20 pounds, I think, is pretty much going to be the top tier uh, of northern snakeheads almost anywhere. I mean, if they, if, and, and that's the other side of that is in, in these systems here, one of the, the presentations we heard was from the Chinese uh, scientist who cited, as the fish grow, like many fish, it's called an ontogenetic shift, that there needs a change whether it's striped bass in terms of temperature and oxygen in our big reservoir or snakeheads. And, and what that means is that the juveniles prefer a higher water temperature and they do very well at water temperatures up around 30 C, whereas the adults only really prefer it like around 26, which is substantially cooler yes. than, than the juveniles. And, and the theory there that was brought out early um, by a, a guy named Gaucho Landis who did his research work with, Mark, uh, with uh, LaPointe uh, from Virginia Tech, their theory was that these fish in these warmer systems, it doesn't look warm here today, but you know, in August and September, these water temperatures are in the high 90s as they are in the, in the tidal Potomac in the four inches of water where the snakeheads like to live. And, and they're just burning out, you know, not physically, but, but like sort of metabolically. And, and that's maybe one of the reasons we see the growth, you know, initially very, very, you know, mean length at age is really high up until about age four. And then they just kind of hit the wall. It's almost like they just burn out. You know, they use up all their, their resources early on. Um, you know, it, that's just a theory. You know, may, maybe the waters here, the summers are just too hot for them. And so may, that might limit sort of the, their their um, their success in some southern states, you know, in Georgia maybe or, or Texas. You might, you know, who knows? But it's just that's just one theory that's kind of bouncing around. All right. Well, everybody, I hope you enjoyed that episode. Uh, still have four more to go. <laughs> so a lot of material to cover. And like I said before, I have this posted every Friday, you know, barring some type of emergency in my life. Now with this series, I want to make one point really quickly. This series is about presenting you with the most recent, up-to-date, scientific evidence on the species. But as John said, a word of caution here, more studies need to be done. Different ecosystems will likely respond differently to the introduction of snakehead. So. Be cautious, especially given that it's illegal. The just the random introduction of random stocking of these fish in other waters is not encouraged. Enough studies have not yet been done, and it's illegal. You're going to get yourself in trouble <laughs> if you get caught with that kind of stuff. So, it's just a quick point I want to make. It's based on the most recent evidence, and in the future, different scientific studies in different kinds of waters may give different results. All right.
So I love the species, don't get me wrong, but I said I wanted to be objective as possible and responsible with the information I put out. So I'm contacting other specialists within the field in the event they want to provide contrasting information. And after, the series is, after this series is concluded, hopefully be able to host a few of them as well. So I want to make sure I'm getting the actual truth and facts out there as opposed to taking one position in kind of a biased way. So I'll stop right there. And, uh, well, let's get to the little bonus video for some snakehead fishing I have coming up <laughs> since it's uh, still too cold to chase them ourselves, for the most part anyway. Yeah, any other questions or comments, let me know and have a go. Got him. There you are. Nice one. All right. Look at that thick one. Yeah. Oh, oh, big. Not today. <laughs> All right, you big powerful beauty. <laughs> there you go.